Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Um, Art and I have a special treat for you today. Art, we have a new contributor. Well, we have lots of contributors, but we have a new contributor. Tell us who we're going to meet. Yeah, it's uh, Debbie Weiss, the hungover widow, and there's a lot in there. Uh, but we'll have her explain more of it. Actually, you may have seen the interview we did with her recently. And uh, I uh, advise and suggest that you go back and take a look at that. But uh, Debbie now is joining us as a regular contributor. And yes. without further ado, uh, here's Debbie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Debbie, great to see you. And thank you, by the way, for kind of joining our little online family of contributors. We've got... 10, I often call them expert contributors, and that would include you. You're an expert in what? Very little, no. Um, I'm actually a former attorney, so I can talk about insurance coverage law, but um, I'm <laughs> sort of an expert in middle-age dating. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're, billing you, we're billing you as, uh, as the expert in middle-age dating, not law, although... I think Art has some good questions for you. No, about... well, I, actually, what I was planning, and, and, and Debbie, thank you for uh, sticking with the middle age dating because I was actually going to go back to law school so I could I could become a contributor for insurance law. So uh, thank <laughs> you for not stepping on my 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 hopes and dreams. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, you um, just as a little bit of background, you uh, reluctantly became a middle-aged person dating because of a tragedy in your family when your husband uh, died of cancer when you were the age of 50. And you go into that in our last interview. Uh, so what are the kind of things that, um, uh, could you've blogged about it and you've written for the Huffington Post and a lot of other places. What are the kind of things that we should be expect that you'll be addressing uh, in this uh, middle-aged dating uh, series that uh, you're about to do? Well, one of my main focuses, um, it's going to be a little cruel here, is the deplorable quality of middle-aged men. I know so many middle-aged women who have just simply given up on men, they've given up on dating, and they've given up on relationships. And through some of my experiences, I can see why, but I do want to talk a bit about that and how to have hope and maybe how to raise our expectations and not to settle for things that we don't want. So it sounds, it, it, Debbie, it sounds to me like you want to empower other women who are single and dating in middle age. Well, at least I want them to feel less alone in this. I want them to know they're not alone. That, you know, this um, alienation we're all feeling, I, I think, is pretty common. And, um, you know, maybe sometimes it's best just to back away. But I certainly would like to share my experiences. And you've but had a few, from what I understand. And, and some really good practical advice on, uh, uh, as you, much like we in uh, celebrating Act Two for uh, the people in their journey of the second half of their life, John and I have been on that road for a while, and we know where some of the pitfalls are. You certainly. Uh, uh, through your writings and other conversations we've had, have been on that journey as well. And uh, you come up with some pretty good conclusions after a while about what you shouldn't settle for and how you should handle certain situations. Uh, and uh, I assume that that's what we can expect from the series. Pretty much. Um, some of it is honestly just commiseration. I'm sharing some of my war stories from having been in this situation. But yeah, I do have, I think, have practical advice and um, maybe a little bit empowering because I, I come back to this a lot, but I think that a lot of women of my generation, we were raised to be so kind and conciliatory and passive. And I think that serves us extremely poorly in the dating world. It, it didn't serve me very well in law either, but um, <laughs> I think we need to get past that. <laughs> I, I, Debbie, you have used the phrase cesspool to describe yep. middle-aged dating. Yep. Um, 
is is there any hope? Yes. You want more than that. Okay. Yes, there is hope. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's hope when we um, get past the dating apps and we see each other as people and as individuals, each person with their own hopes, their own dreams, their own foibles, who are putting themselves out there. And we treat each other with so much more kindness, compassion, and above all, accountability than we have. So I do think there's hope, but it really requires a great degree of cooperation. Mm. Now, I, being of the opposite gender, I'm interested to know if, it's obviously you're talking to other women, but I'm interested to know if men tune in to watch, will they learn anything? Well, judging from some of my past writing, they will probably learn not to like me. Um, I had some pretty nasty comments online. But actually, I think they might learn something. I mean, we're all just people. And I think if we approach things from a perspective of friendship instead of conquest, that there's hope. Um, and at the very least, you know, I'll beg for good old fashioned manners. So yeah, I do, I do think men can learn something because I think we see each other so much in this arena as others, as opposed to potential friends. And I think that's something that we should work on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Besides, uh, besides, um, uh, watching the series that we're going to have here, you have a website and you've got a book coming out, which we'll talk about at a future episode. Uh, but where can people go to find out more about uh, and see some of your, your writings over these last, uh, I guess it's uh, five or six years already? It, yeah, it's been a really long time. I used to write for magazines and then um, I was on Medium. I was a two-time top writer, I think for about three days in relationships and psychology. <laughs> You can find my writing on my blog, which is called The Hungover Widow. I'm on Twitter as DK Weiss Writer, and I'm on Facebook as The Hungover Widow. And, you know, you can friend me on Facebook as Debbie Weiss. That works, too. Great. And find me on Medium. I'm also on Medium for people who pay the $5 monthly fee. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great little site. Um, Debbie, thank you. We're looking forward to uh, seeing your first video as... Uh, the Hungover Widow talking on middle-aged dating, and uh, I know it'll I know it'll be a lot of fun, uh, as well as instructive. Yeah, I hope so. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. <laughs>